Glory to God in the highest. Hallelujah. The gospel is a liquid fire gospel. It's not, you know, when we say liquid fire, which means like, you know, it goes into a cold places and then renews the heart of cold, you know, cold versus hot. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. So we'll talk today about the, uh, the, one of the parables of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Powerful, powerful parable today. Um, I pray, you know, that today is not going to be a speech or a sermon or whatever it is. I, I pray that you take this as a case study, you know, study this. In, in, like, and then talk to the Holy Spirit. While, while, while we were, were, were preaching uh, today, I, I, I want you to communicate, you know, with God. And then when you, when, you, when you communicate with God, you take from the Holy Spirit, right? So what I encourage you today is, you know, there's a paper that you can take notes Please take as many notes as you can. At the end of this, I'm going to ask you to, you know, to say one statement, one sentence, one Bible verse, whatever it is, one thing that touched your heart for less than 20 seconds or 30 seconds. I'm not going to ask you to come here. No, from your place, you just say, what did God tell you? Or what did you learn from this parable? Hallelujah. Are you excited? All right, okay. Let's stand together and read the words of God for today. Um, it's going to be the 13th chapter of Matthew, verses 44, 45, 46. Let's read together. The kingdom of heaven is like a hidden... Is, when a man found it, he hid it again. Then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of God is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of a great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Today, um, Jesus is talking to us in this parable. You know, um, the question is, why did Jesus use his parable in the first place? You know, Jesus said, um, I'm going to use parables so that everybody will understand, right? But then he's, he told his disciples, you know what? You are giving the enigma, the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. By the way, the when, when, we, when we talk about the parables, Jesus made it very easy because the parables are like, you know, storytelling. It's a, it's a kind of metaphor. It's something, you know, relates to you. You know, you know what God is telling you about, you know. And then if we, if we may also introduce the, you know, before, before Jesus came, John the Baptist said, repent, the kingdom of heaven has, co has come near. He's, you know, pointing into kingdom of heaven has come near. Jesus was the introducer of that, of that kingdom. It's come near. And then later, when, when we study this, we, we know that the people in the, um, in the Holy Land, they were familiar with treasures, right? In the times of Solomon, he said, if you look at it for silver and search for it for, as a hidden treasure, so people know what the treasure is, right? In the Roman Empire, in the Byzantine Empire, in all of these empires, they were hiding treasures everywhere under the rock. By the way, in, in the, in the, um, in the um, you know, some of the treasures were hidden in the rivers sometimes, you know? Yeah. So the ordinary people, they knew exactly what Jesus was talking about. But then, if you... Take a moment to recognize that sometimes the, the, the treasure is not obvious to others, right? If you take a moment to understand that the treasure can be, can usually, the people, when they, when they discover the treasure, they, you know what do they usually say? How many times did we pass in this street? I will never know this. How many times did I pass this? And I, I wish I've known that there was a treasure here, right? Yeah. A quote, you know, one of the Bible verses from Isaiah says, he had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. 
speaking of Jesus. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain, like one whom people hide their faces. He was despised. We held him in low esteem. So Jesus, he was like, he wasn't, he was, he was God on earth, but some people despised him, right? And there are two reactions for every time you encounter a treasure. Either you, either you be the thief on the, on the cross who said yes, or you be the other person who was crucified and who said no, right? The treasure was very obvious. Jesus was, was actually come from poor parents. The, his, his parents, you know, they didn't find anything to, you know, offer a, a sheep or, or some, an animal. That's why they have a p pair of uh, pigeons. And you know what? Jesus also, I, I want to I wanna point out that Jesus, Jesus himself wasn't poor, right? Because, you know, feeding thousands is not p poverty. Healing the sick, that's not poverty. That's, that's better than the whole world system of health. So he wasn't poor. In fact, if, if I were in the time of Jesus, I would love that he, he would stay in my, in, in my house. You know what? But in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, I wish that we can, you know, stay seated. But can, you, can we read this together? This is a very important verse in the Bible. Let's read this together. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, Yet for your sake he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. Hallelujah. The treasure can be found in unordinary places, in unordinary, in unexpected places. And my question to us this day, why did, why did this guy find the treasure and hid it? Why did he hide it? You know what? The answer is very simple. He hid the treasure because he was unwilling to trade this treasure by anything else or anyone else. He found the treasure. He hid it because there's, you know, there's no trade-off. There's no better than this. There's no better than this deal. Remember, you know, John Wesley said, he hides it deep in his heart and gives up all other happiness for it. He was planning to take care of this. He hid it to put himself in a place to attain the kingdom of God. Blessed Virgin Mary said she hid the treasure in her heart. He, she treasured. The psalmist said, I have treasured your word in my heart. I, I took your word as a treasure. Why did he hide it? Proverbs 23, 23, buy truth and don't sell it. He found a great value in this treasure. He hid it. Because the kingdom of God presents itself unexpectedly. You know, you don't plan to get the treasure, but you get that treasure. The gospel is always universal, remember. But it should be also personal. You have to take it, grasp it, and see, like, like, like kiss it, embrace it, whatever the word it is. The gospel is universal. But it's also personal. The field, according to Jerome, is the word of God. It takes your whole life to discover Jesus as your treasure. You know what? Usually, they ask me, you know, um, how long is gonna, this, this course going to take? You know, back in Jordan, I, uh, you know, I took, for example, 15 years in, in in preaching, right? But usually I say, you know what? It's going to take us six months to finish Luke. Usually it takes us two years to finish it. Every time you open the Word of God, it's like, man, this is, this is beyond understanding. This is, these are treasures that even the two years are not enough. You go again in the book of Genesis, Revelation, and so on. You see the connection in the Bible, treasures, treasures, hallelujah. In his joy, the word karas, again, it's like internal, authentic, everlasting joy. It wasn't something out of, you know, out of the, like, you know what, usually they, you know, usually they say, did he use the left side of his brain or the right of his side of his brain? He, you know what, you know, the economy, 
people like you know UW, there are a lot of graduates in psychology now. You know why? Because they want to you know to trick you, to buy this. You see the black guy with a, with a, with a, with the shoes and say, oh, I want to be that guy. You know, he he exercised eight hours a day, and you're not going to be that guy, right? But you know, you still buy that. And then, you know, they, they try to trick you, the psychologists, they try to, you know, let you walk in places, and then, you know, there are a lot of things that you can, but, but you know what, I would, I would say that, that he used both rational and emotional, you know, he uses his rational thinking and emotional thinking, and emotional, you know, thing, you know, Christianity is not a burden. In his joy, well, he lost a lot of things, right? Hudson Taylor is a 19th, 19th, missionary, 19th century missionary in China. He said, I never made a sacrifice. I never made a sacrifice. Christianity, you know, he sold everything that he has in his joy. Christianity is a faith of losing to gain. You cannot win unless you let go. Christianity is not something you hold on to. You have to let go. Jesus says, for whoever wants to, wants to save their life will lose it, ladies and gentlemen. But whoever loses their life, for me, will find it. Wow. That was powerful. Let's, let's read together the, the 14th chapter of, uh, of Luke, verse 33. Jesus is telling this, his disciples a very, very important thing. He said this, in the same way, those of you who do not give up everything you have cannot be my disciples. You see, we see always, you know, people in Christianity, they lose, they lose to gain. He lost, you know what? He gave everything to get that treasure, to get that field. You know, we see, you know, there was a beggar. He was blind. He was sitting right there every day. But then Jesus was calling him, and then he left his mantle. He left his cloak and followed him. Hallelujah. So that the Samaritan, when she met Jesus, she left the jar. Christianity is, is a faith of losing to win. Paul left his status. Peter left his nets. The you know what? All the disciples left all, all of them. Barnabas sold his land and gave, gave, gave his land. Mark's mother gave his house, her house to Jesus, to host Jesus. Joanna held Jesus from her money. And my question to us this morning, what do we need to let go? What do we need to let go? You know what? He sold everything that he had. Is it, is it a material thing? Is it a career that's holding us captive? Is it, is it something that's hindering us from getting into this full glory? St. Francis of Assisi said, when we leave this earth, you cannot take anything that you have received, only the things you have given. Say one more time. When you leave this earth, you cannot leave anything that you have received, only the things you have given. You see, uh, there's a famous writer in, in real estate industry. He said, price is only an issue in the absence of value, right? If you see, the, the value is not that important. You see, see, oh, you talk about the price, right? But if you see something of great value, and you sell everything, everything that you have, and willing to be follower of the, of the master, in a while, we're going to see a video. It looks, you know, it's like one, one minute video, but it's, I, I see this as an interesting, you know, clip or whatever it is. So let's watch this together. Anyways, <laughs> um, anyways, don't worry about it. 
Okay, so it's a, it's a one minute video. It, it wasn't, it wasn't that unfortunately, but um, you know what? In this video, you know, it's just a cartoon thing. It's, it's just interesting, you know, of, of a person, he sold all that he had. And then we look at the things that he sold. Oh man, he sold all the things that he had, the cow, the, the satellite, whatever it is, you know, to get to that treasure. Apostle Paul is asking us, how much would this, you know, you know, and then if, 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 if price is an issue in the absence of value, then if this is so valuable, then how much would we pay for it? You know, Apostle Paul is saying, you know what, I have a lot of things to, I have a lot of reasons for such confidence, he said. You know, I'm a tribe of Benjamin, Hebrew of Hebrews, Pharisee, persecutor of the church, and as of the righteousness, I am, you know, faultless. But then he said, whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss, Paul says, because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ, Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things, and I consider them garbage, that I may gain Christ. Christianity you lose to gain. Ladies and gentlemen, Apostle Paul is saying, you know what, I'm circumcised on the eighth day. I am, I am uh, from the tribe of Benjamin, Hebrew of Hebrews, and so on, a Pharisee, and so on. But then he said, all this that I'm bragging about, it's garbage, right? My question to us is, did, 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 did this word like hit us really hard today? Rubbish. Are you gonna, you know, are you going to deal with rubbish as treasure, or you want to get rid of this, uh, you know, rubbish? Maybe 2023 has passed, and a lot of times we had like this, between brackets, rubbish moments, rubbish times, rubbish evenings, rubbish weeks. But are we, in this year, 2024, are we going to be, you know, um, uh, you know looking at the surface for the bushes, the trees? The rocks, the dirt, the, the mountains, the, the rivers, or are we going to dig deep? Are we going to lose something to gain something? You know, if we, if we continue to be a, 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 a surface believers, then it's very hard that we always say, see the, the, the trash as if it is something, you know, we, we're bragging about it. But then, you know, Apostle Paul said, I'm going to get everything to gain Christ, for the sake of Christ. Every time I get into the plane, you know, once you get into the plane, you have this ability to, to think, you know, as a global citizen of heaven, right? When you, when you get in, in the air, you see that, you know, the earth is so small, life is short, and then you ask God, how would I contribute in this awesomeness, in this kingdom? How, how would you use me, continue to use me to, to be this voice, to be, you know, seeking the things of above? You get this, you know, global, you have to be a global believer. Don't, don't, don't just think of the things that you, you, you own or think or the church. or You have to be big, bigger, bigger than this. You know, in the Pilgrim's Progress, by John Bunyan, you know, he, you know, Satan is like deceiving him, right? It's, it's all like deception, like go this way, go this way. Uh, yeah. But you know what? The church to is to remind us today that the devil is a liar. Hallelujah. And you know what? Declare today that Satan will not continue to distract you from this treasure, from knowing exactly what you need in this life. Unfortunately, the young, rich ruler he found the treasure. He has the chance. But you know what? He said no. He said no to that treasure. And he left sad. Oh, man. Oh, man. So sorry for that. Yeah. Instead of in his joy, he sold this guy. He didn't trade. He didn't trade it. He didn't get in the, in the right deal. You know what? He said he left sad, the Bible says. Unfortunately. Oregon or Oreganos, Oreganos, the, the real word, but origin you say in America. He said, those who th 
seek the things from above, they completely the, re the, the thing, they completely reject the things they used to like. Let me say it one more time. Those who seek things from above, they completely reject the things they used to like. You know what? Some people say, you know, did we say that he, he, he bought the treasure or he bought the field, by the way? You know what? He bought the field because he wants his whole life to enjoy this treasure, right? And then, you know, in the relationship between you and Jesus, it, 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 it's, 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 oh, it's universal, correct, but it's also personal. Remember, Jesus said, close the door and have this intimate relationship with me. Do you have this chamber that you go? And then Jesus said, bluntly, close the door, which means no other distractions. You know, hold your Bible, the physical Bible. You can't come to the, the, the church without a Bible, right? But, but I mean, in your daily devotions, <laughs> I wish that you have a physical Bible so that, you know, when you get to the notification, you don't care less. The messages, all, size, all kind of technology, you know what? So, you know, you have to have an, in, this intimate, intimate, authentic relationship with the, with the Lord Jesus Christ himself. It's not a shallow, cheesy, surface believer. It's just, you know, authentic, steel-based. You know what? Jesus, Jesus himself went to the desert. Is that right? Yeah. Moses, he went to the desert. 40 years in the richness of Egypt, 40 years in the desert, then 40 years in leading the greatest or the, let's say, the, 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 the largest church in the Old Testament, if you will. Mm. I'm going to ask you, which desert are you going to go to? <laughs> it may or may not be a physical location, but it's like, it's like your chamber, right? You know, Suzanne Wesley, uh, the mother of, um, of uh, John and Charles Wesley, she, you know, she has a lot of kids and, you know, they're distracting, right? But when, when she has the, the apron in, on her head, what does that mean? That's, that's the quiet time, that's the chamber. You, you, you take it or leave it. You have to take it. You have to treasure this time. You have to have this intimate, authentic relationship. Is this message for believers or unbelievers? It's actually both, you know? The believers in terms of, you know, the, the, the authenticity, the discipleship, the, the getting your roots deep down, but also it's a powerful way of evangelism. Remember that those who did not taste Christ... They will always live in a, in a place of, you know, in a place they treasure other things or other people rather than having the true and living water. You know what? Let's read this together. There's, a, there's a, the next parable I'm going to uh, uh, talk about now. Let's read together in Matthew, the 13th chapter, uh, verse 45. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. Let's read together. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Hallelujah. You know, it's, um, it's lovely because these two parables, you know, uh, uh, the first person who found the treasure, he stumbled by it, right? He just found it unexpectedly. But the other, the other parable that we, we, we listen now, it's like a merchant who was looking, who was, who was searching. There's someone, there are two scenarios here. Someone is looking and someone is like, you know, found it by accident unexpectedly. And this is, you know, the pearl of, uh, pearl of great value. I would mention some of the examples in the Bible that talks about this one. You know, for example, in the treasure parable, you know, the thief on the cross. This guy is, 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 is the best thief in the world. He, he stole heaven. He stole heaven at the end. He stole heaven. You know, it's like interesting when you go to heaven, you see this guy, you know, man. Man, you destroyed all theologians around the world. 
<laughs> you destroyed a lot of doctrines, a lot of... The thief on the cross, he found, you know, Jesus was, you know, it's a ter like he was, he was on the cross with all this, you know, agony and all this suffering and all the pain, but he found a treasure. He said, Lord, wow. He understood the, the, the lordship of Jesus Christ. Lord, remember me. Usually, the dead person, you, you never, you, you know, usually the, the, the person who's dying tells the person who's living, remember me, right? But not, not the, so he understood also that Jesus is going to, he will be risen. This, this is unbelievable. The thief on the cross is an unbelievable character in the Bible. He said, Lord, remember me when you come in your kingdom. Wow. Wow. What a beautiful, beautiful kingdom of heaven. It's all... But by the way, uh, the Gospel of Matthew focuses kingdom of heaven, kingdom of heaven, kingdom of heaven. The other Gospels, they say kingdom of God. They're also synonyms. But as we, as we can see here, you know, one of the, you know, the songs that the band, uh, the word classic band that we have, they, they sang, they said, you know, one, one of the songs that says, um, you know, you didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. That's, that's the place where, where God is ruling and on, on earth, let's say. The Samaritan woman at the well, she found that, um, that treasure, right? But then also in the parable of pearls, there are people who were searching for it and they got it, like the, the Magi or the Magi, whatever you want to, al Majus. The Magi, they were, you know, looking for the star. It took them months months to come and see the pearl of pearls if you don't if you don't mind lydia also she was a businesswoman but she was also a worshiper she was a searcher she was looking for it saint gregory said the pearl of great value is the bible once you read it you find it better than all other pearls jerome said through many ways we find the one and the true way, the pearls of the Old Testament are the Old Testament fathers of faith. They're pearls, right? But then, these were the ways that led us to the one and true way in the Gospels to find Jesus, the pearl of pearls. Both parables, they have this anticipation of losing something to getting something better. Both parables, they sold everything, both parables, they had a choice in both parables, in their joy. They were joyful, you know what? You know, Mary, you know, sister of Martha, she said, Mary, Mary has, Jesus says, Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. She, she treasured this. Both of the parables, they needed an immediate and active plan to, to do things, you know, three verbs, go, sell, and buy. Both, they have a discovery. They both, you know, they we discover something like, it's like a unbelievable of value, right? That's why we always hear about the Simon, you know, Peter Simon, but you know what? His brother, his name is Andrew. He said, the first thing, the Bible says, the first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found the Messiah. Hallelujah. We have found the treasure. We have found it. Andrew in this case. Hallelujah. The gospel is very simple. It's, it's you approach God like kids. Jesus said, unless you change and become like little kids, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You know what? I have a master's degree in industrial engineering, and then they, you know, they teach you like optimization and then uh, financial, uh, financial things and engineering economy and mathematical, uh, you know, um, simulation and so on. But you know what? If you think, where would, where would be the best ROI, return on investment? Where would be the best way that, you know, I lose something to gain something? Where? Where? This is the question that goes along, along, along in the, in the social media all over the place. Where's my best investment should be? You know what? I would like us to read the sixth chapter of Matthew where Jesus gives us the, 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 the brilliant answer, the brilliant and everlasting answer. You'll never hear this answer anywhere else in the world. 
except in the teachings of Jesus. Let's read this together. Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 to 21. It says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal, for where is your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Hallelujah. Jesus gives us the answer. What is the best ROI? Return on investment? Well, here you go. Here you go, ladies and gentlemen. The place, the place here is to remind us that this is the place where we should do these three verbs, go, sell, and buy. And then the practical, the practical issue here is, is how much would it cost, right? You know, if, if I'm going I'm to sell everything, but then I have to buy something, and how much would it cost, right? And then Jesus answers, he said, You proclaim the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. You received without paying, give without paying. How much does it cost? Zero, ladies and gentlemen. Zero. Prophet Isaiah is making this like, like he said, those who has no money, no money, he says, come, buy and eat. What? What? He says, who has no money? No money. <laughs> he says, come, buy and eat. You know what? You don't buy the kingdom because you earn it. You buy the kingdom because you want it. God is gracious. He wants to give you everything. But you know what? Take this baby steps, if you don't mind, and follow God. And God will, if you take this like one infinite, finite step, God will take the infinite steps and come towards you. Um, Jesus says, fear not, little flock, for it's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God, you know what? Jesus is pleased to give you the kingdom. It doesn't cost you nothing. It doesn't cost you anything to follow God. You know what? The parable is very, very, very simple. If it costs you everything, as in, you know, costless, zero, everything that has no value, then, you know what? Take it, because it's a good, good deal. Yeah? Yeah? The treasure might be in ordinary places. And in, 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 you know what? It can meet you expectedly and unexpectedly, but then you have to get to that place where you know him, genuinely know him, and serve him all your life. Apostle Paul is making very clear, he says about Jesus, in whom all hidden, all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, in him are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. The real treasure, ladies and gentlemen, to find Jesus. But you can't find him unless everything else, you, you sell everything else and buy that field. How much would it cost you? Zero. Is it expensive? Not a bit. Not a bit. In our evangelism, we were going to tell people that it's going to cost you everything to come to Christ, right? But is it expensive? No. You had, do you have to pay anything? Zero. Remember. The purpose of, of this sermon, to give us hope. You know, Pastor Ev preached last week about hope, right? Hope. If you have hope in this word, then you're miserable. And you continue to live miserable. This is the Bible. Apostle Paul says, you know what? If I, have, I hope in this world, I'm the miserable, the most <laughs> miserable person on earth, right? But we have, we, we have hope in, in, in better things. We have hope in, in, in things that are not seen. Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians, he says, you know what? Let's read this together because this will, you know, I hope this will resonate in, in, in our uh, hearts and minds and the connection between the hearts and minds. Let's, let's read this together. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that all surpassing power 
is from God and not from us. It talks about the treasure, right? But it talks about the jar. We are the jars of clay. We are nothing but a clay. I have a friend who has like, you know, he has a small tube he keeps in his, you know, pocket. He said, this is, I said, what is this? He said, this is the dirt. I said, why? Because, you know, he said, this reminds me that I'm, I'm dirt and I'm going to the dirt. Jars of clay. Remember, never bra brag about your, yourself or anything you have. you have. You have jars of clay, but you know what? Inside, what is inside, what is eternal, is much more important. We have this treasure in jars of clay. Beautiful. That, that's, that, that's all the doctrine that if you think about it or, you know what? Finally, if you want to find the treasure, you have to secretly go to your hiding place. Once you find it, it will disappear. In order for you to find it again, you have to forget all your earthly possessions and get into the secret chamber where you enjoy him for the rest of your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask you in a couple of, um, you know, a couple of sentences if you have gained something today. Uh, can you say it from your place? What are the statements? I'm going to repeat it. It's like 20 or 10 seconds. If you know, you can go ahead. If you want to share something. Jesus is my treasure. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. That was powerful. Thank you. Yes. Lies of the devil to gain the truth of Jesus. Yes. Yes. Keep trusting him. Hallelujah. Yes. Right. Sometimes you find it, sometimes you look for it, but it's free. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Worth trading of everything that you have. Hallelujah. Somebody else? The field is worth owning. The field is worth owning. Hallelujah. All right. Let's, let's bow our heads and pray together. Wonderful Jesus, we thank you because of your presence in this, um, in this church and in our lives. Thank you because of that we are going to sell everything and then um, dedicate our lives to you. And then the people, they're going to see the authenticity that we have and then we're going to shine into the world. Thank you because of the love that you have given us. Thank you because of the, the passion that you've given us to serve you and to exalt your name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen.